So starting with some brief R tips of the day, you may remember that when you exit R Studio, you're often prompted to save your workspace. And so the question I have for you is, what does this exactly mean? When you save your workspace, what actually happens is that any R objects that you currently have loaded, whether these are data frames, vectors, or any other type of object, get saved into a single file. And when you reload R Studio, this file actually gets uh, automatically loaded back in, as long as you had selected yes when you left or exited R Studio. This file actually ends with the extension .r data. And if you had just selected yes to the question when R Studio prompts you, the entire name of the file is actually .r data. But you do have the option to actually name this file if you save your workspace manually rather than relying on RStudio to do this. So just as a quick note, I typically don't recommend saving your workspace for most simple analyses. So when RStudio prompts you, I typically say no to this. Uh, the main reason being that if I've got intermediate results uh, that I generated through my analyses, my preference is to save these as comma separated files that I can kind of load in uh, the next time I open RStudio. This way, none of the data I generated or the analysis I generated is kind of hidden in this uh, binary file uh, that has the R data extension. All of my intermediate results are also immediately visible and shareable through comma separated files. Occasionally, though, saving results to an R data file can be convenient. And the reason it's convenient is that when you restart R Studio, instead of having to load in a bunch of separate files and repeat some of your analyses, especially if your analyses take a long time, you can just simply load in all of the objects that you had uh, active in your last R session in a single function. Note that if you do this, you still have to library in the packages every time you restart R Studio. It's just that once you load in all the R objects, you don't have to kind of individually load those back in. So how can you save your workspace? Let's say that you're working on uh, you know, week five's worth of assignment or lab, and you want to save this to a file. And you've got multiple different data frames open, and you don't want to lose track of any of those. So the way you would do it is you could type in to either your R notebook or into the console of R Studio, save dot image, file equals, and then the name of your file ending in dot R data. Um, the RD and R data don't have to be capital, but that's how R does it by default. So I tend to just uh, also keep the R and D capital. If you're wondering where this file lives, as long as you ran the save.image function from an R notebook, this file is actually going to be found in the same folder as your R notebook file by default. When it comes time to load this file back into your workspace, the way you'll do it is to run the load function with this uh, file name. And remember that the load function also needs to be in the same directory um, in an R notebook as the file. Otherwise, uh, it won't be able to locate the file without you giving it the complete path to the file, uh, which would include all the folders, etc. The only reason I'm including this as an R tip of the day is that we'll be working with the namsys 08.r data file in class uh, today and also in lab this week. So I want you to just be familiar with how I created that file and what is that file, should you choose to do a similar thing. So this file consists of multiple data frames. And if you want to actually load it in, you'll use the same code, except it'll be load namsys 08r data. And this, of course, of course, assumes that you've gone to Canvas and downloaded this uh, file to your machine to the same directory as your R notebook. Another R tip of the day I wanted to kind of just delve into briefly is this question of what exactly is a plus sign in RStudio? So when you type one plus one into RStudio and run this line of code, you get an answer of two. And so what is a plus? Well, if plus was a function, just like mean, then we should be able to add one and one using the following syntax, where it's plus parenthesis one comma one. Now, it's not ludicrous to assume that 
you know, plus could be a function because there's another type of function that you've been using uh, in this course that isn't all that different from plus, and that's the pipe function. So remember that when you use the uh, the pipe, the pipe is actually a specific type of function. We call an, call this an infix operator, where it takes what's on the left and it pipes it in and inserts it as the first argument to the function on the right. Similarly, the plus function takes what's on the left and what's on the right, adds them together, and returns the result. But if you actually enter this exact code into our studio, you'll get an error. Uh, and the reason you get an error is that the plus is actually an unusual type of variable name. So imagine if it was the name of a column, you'd, you'd get an error. And so in order to use it in this form, you actually have to surround it with backticks, which just lets R know that this is an unusual type of variable or function name um, so that it can run it properly. So if you run R, sorry, if you run an R, uh, the plus function surrounded by backticks, one comma one, you actually will get the right answer of two. And the main lesson here is that everything in R is a function, even a plus is a function. And uh, one thing that's really funny about that is that you could actually go back and redefine plus to mean minus, such that when you try to add one and one together, you actually get back zero instead of two. Now, you definitely wouldn't want to do that because um, it could result in a lot of errors in your code. But this is actually how ggplot is able to redefine the meaning of plus in order to be able to add different components of a plot together. And you'll see, an ex you'll see this kind of syntax used as we start to get into the meat of ggplot in the following slides.